Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Marketing from the Trenches podcast. My name's Will Wang. I'm your host as per usual, and I've got uh, James Norquay on the podcast today. So James is a friend of mine, and he is an absolute expert when it comes to SEO and how to utilize SEO to get more leads and grow your business. So James runs a, an agency, an SEO agency called Prosperity Media in Sydney here, and he's won numerous global awards for the work that he's doing for himself and also for his team. So I'm going to be the first to admit that SEO isn't my strong suit. It isn't what we built our business on, um, and I've got limited understanding in terms of um, you know, a very basic understanding of how to make SEO work, which is why it's great to have an expert like James on the podcast. So he's going to take you through steps to make sure your SEO works for you, things that you should be doing, things that you shouldn't be doing, and how to make sure it all works well in the long run. So I'm going to hand you across to uh, James and we're going to talk about some of the things that he's noticed in terms of the SEO. Uh, and just before we do that, I just wanted to ask for your help with something. And that is to subscribe and to like and to leave me a re review for the content on here. It's super, super important to me because it helps me understand what type of content you'd really like to see on the podcast. So let me know what topics, what speakers, what types of businesses, whatever it is, please do let me know. And if you have a friend who you think would really benefit from this content, please do share it with him or her as well. So I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate the support. I hope you get a lot from this episode as I do with every single episode that goes out there and I'll see you on the other side. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Marketing from the Trenches podcast. I've got a guest with me today who's going to share some amazing, amazing insights on SEO. He's a mate of mine, we're both Sydney based, agency owners, James Nor Norky, Norkai uh, from Prosperity Media. We've known each other for a while, James, so then thanks so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge. Thanks for having me, Will. Uh, looking forward to answering whatever questions you have and um, yeah, sharing some tips for the audience. Uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, awesome. So I'm actually pretty excited to have you on here because um, I used to get involved in SEO stuff way back when, right? Way back when you're kind of trying to figure out what you want to do, what our agency looks like. So we touched on the SEO stuff a little bit, but then I kind of left it for a lot. And I know the stuff that you're doing with your clients, like you've got some pretty famous clients on board. I won't mention any names, but they're really great clients and you're doing some really, really good work for them. So you know, some of the stuff and case studies you've been sharing, I've been really impressed with. So dude, really keen to find out you know, exactly what you think is working with SEO, uh, what you think small business owners have to do to make it work and all that kind of good stuff. But before we dive into that, um, I always like to start with, you know, your superhero origin story. Like, how did you get up to where you are? Like, Prosperity Media is growing like crazy. What was the path to where you guys are at now? Yeah, so how did I get into the industry? Like 14 years ago, I was uh, running some uh, websites. So we had like a MySpace layout website. We had a bunch of like other content sites. And then uh, these sites were generating like millions of visitors. I think at one point we had like 25 million uh, visitors from organic traffic. So made a good bit of money on that. I was... Uh, buying some stupid shit like uh, nice cars and people thinking, where's this, you do. Guy, where's this young guy getting the money from, you know, and like, uh, what's he up to? Up something something uh, dodgy. And um, no, I was, uh, it was all making money online. Yeah. And then I was, uh, parents were like, why don't you go get a real job? Because I didn't think I knew what I was doing. <laughs> doing something on a computer. Yeah. And then I went and uh, started the SEO team for a large media agency in Sydney back in like 2008, 2009. Um, so that was a lot of fun and um, we worked on some really big businesses there like uh, top 20 ASX companies things like that and um, yeah did, started the SEO team for them and uh, worked there for like four years and then um, in the end of 2012 2013 started Prosperity Media so we've been running ever since then and um, yeah we run Prosperity Media we run some of our own uh, affiliate sites on the side. Uh, we're running a conference next year. We're doing we're doing meetups. We've run like eighty meetups in Sydney. Wow. Um, we've got a big one next week with uh, Dayan from our team, who's uh, running an event as well. So it's going to be good. So we're doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you, you you guys are everywhere. You guys are crazy, and the workload that you put in, like that's the thing that I really appreciate about what you guys you know have done and they're doing. The fact that. 
uh, you took something that you were experiencing. So you weren't, you know, a coach coaching other coaches to coach. It's like you did the site, you built the site, right? And then you work for the agency. Now you've done your own thing, but you've also got all this other stuff going on. So like the hustle and the amount of energy that you put in put out into the world, man, that's something that I've always, I've always respected and also the results that you guys have got. So, and awesome stuff on that. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work. And yeah, I mean, like um, even putting on events, you know, just giving back to the community. Um, yeah, it's good. Like get your name out there and you can hire staff and things like that and meet some really good people because that's part of running an agency. You know, you've got to be out there. You've got to be networking. You've got to be building partnerships. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's a bit nonstop. Sometimes you just want to catch your breath, but, um, but it's fun while it, while it happens, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, awesome. So let's get into the SEO stuff because that's your real specialty. And that's, you, know, you guys are, I think, some of the, just amazing at the stuff that you do. But I'm going to come back from going from more basic stuff and then we can get a little bit deeper into you know, some more of the advanced stuff. So yeah. you know, the, most of the people listening to this generally will be small business owners who you know, just want to get more leads, get more sales and just get more revenue for their business. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're seeing or some of the really ex- easy to execute things that they can be doing that they're probably not doing that can improve their SEO and get them more traffic to their website? Yeah, I mean, like if you're a small business owner and you don't have much budget, like the easiest thing you can start with is like doing a basic site audit, you know, looking for technical issues. And then um, once you've kind of done that, I mean, you can look like the other day, um, my uh, partner's uh, sister messaged me and said that she works at a, an architecture firm and she's like, we just got a new website for our small business. Can you have a look just to give me a few tips? And I was like, all right, like, I'll go, like, we'll have a quick look. And I just went and had a look and the, the branding agency that built the website, they, um, they had it no indexed. So that was the first thing I said, they've got a no index tag on your website. You're not going to get any traffic from Google. So, I mean, I said to her, first fix up that, ensure that your website's on uh, HTTPS site-wide, so they've got an SSL certificate. Um, Ensure that you're set up on Google My Business. So, if you're a small business, there's a lot of opportunity getting onto Google My Business and just getting set up because you can get a lot of local traffic that way. And then I just said to her, like, you're just going to have to fix up all these other little technical issues and start building out some relevant landing pages on the site, do keyword research. So... I mean, the thing about SEO, there's so much to it, but you've got to start with the basics. You know, you've got, to, you've got to set up tracking. You've got to set up Google Search Console, start monitoring things. There's a, there's a lot you can do, but you've got to start with the real basics. Yeah, right. So there definitely is a lot. And I think, you know, some of the people I talk to with a very rudimentary understanding of SEO, they're just like, oh, you just put a few links here and there and links <laughs> back to your website and, and the way you go, right? But it's kind of... Nowadays, I think the way I see it is that there's on-site SEO stuff and then there's off-site. Is that yeah. the right way to explain it? Yeah, I mean, like you've, uh, it, that's a pretty easy way to understand. I mean, you've got like on-site factors, which, are, which is your, your whole technical setup, your content on the website, all the schema markup, all that type of stuff. And then you've got all your off-site factors. So that's like um, brand mentions, uh, links back to the site, which is very important. I mean, getting high-quality links is still... 50% plus of SEO. I mean, you might see some people that say, oh, links don't matter, but in, comp- in competitive verticals, they definitely matter. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a plumber in Sydney or if you're a mortgage broker in Sydney. You've got to have a, some really good links going to your site because if you don't, your competitors have probably already been doing SEO for 10 years. So you're up against some, some big dogs. So yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, and, and those industries that, that you mentioned, um, you know, you've got some pretty big players in there who obviously invest a lot in, in their SEO team. So it's kind of like if you don't even have the basics set up, there's no way you can even, you know, even try to do guerrilla marketing and, and get around the SEO, right? It's, it's, it's pretty tough. Yeah, exactly. Like you've got to have the basics set up because if you don't have the basics set up, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like you can be spending a million dollars a month on TV ads, but if you don't have the basics set up from an SEO point of view and like you've got some basic technical issues, you're not going to be getting any search traffic. Like that's one thing that a lot of big brands, they make mistakes like that as well. You know, they'll, they'll spend crazy money on like out, outdoor advertising, TV, like mail outs. And then for SEO, they'll be like, they'll, they won't even give you a, a hardly any budget. And they'll be like, but the thing is that's where most of your budget should be gone to, 
like uh, paid advertising and organic SEO channels because that's where you're going to get your biggest ROI. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, right. So let's come back to that because I think, you know, I haven't done SEO myself in a fair while. So some of the stuff that you mentioned, I'm actually really interested and curious about. Uh, let's go back to the first one where you said you know, no indexing. Can you kind of explain what that actually means? Yeah, so basically um, what a lot of web developers do when they're building a website, they'll add like a meta no, uh, no index tag into the header. So what that does is it will prevent Google from indexing the website. So what that means is you won't show up for your brand terms. So usually web developers do that as like a, a preventive measure so the site doesn't get indexed. But what a lot of people do is they'll push a site live and they won't even take that tag down and they'll be like, Oh, here's your completed website. And then all of a sudden the business owner is like, how come I'm not getting any traffic? I'm not showing off for my brand terms. And it's because they just haven't removed that tag. So it's pretty basic stuff. Like you can change that to like um, quite easily. And um, yeah. a lot of uh, plugins, people just click the wrong buttons on a plugin and all of a sudden you can, de-index your website so you got to get that right yeah awesome so indexing is uh, one big one what yeah. what other what um can you give us two more you know common mistakes that you you see when, especially when you do audits for for new clients coming on board um i mean like another big one that we see is people using really large images so you see like people that just upload like a 20 megabyte image to the home page and they'll be like oh why is my website loading in 30 seconds you know <laughs> well, you've got a 20 megabyte image on the homepage. So one thing that we always recommend is go to like squish.app so you can get the image resized. Um, that's, that's a really good point for us, like any type of small business. Like if you, you don't want to have big images because they're just going to slow your site down and um, they're going to just make your users uh, take longer to kind of find the information they want to. And, you know, when site speed is such a crucial um, conversion factor as well. So that's a big one. Yeah, right. So just making sure everything has kind of been set up correctly from, from a technical perspective. Yeah. And another one, just to add another point is just getting onto like Google My Business and just setting that up. Like so many businesses don't do that. Or if they do do it, they just spam the hell out of it. You've got to be really careful because like if you drop in too many keywords into your GMB listing, um, Google's kind of cracking down on that stuff at the moment. So yeah, I mean, whilst there's a lot of opportunity and traffic potential in Google, my business, you gotta, you can't be too spam heavy. So I think a lot of small businesses, sometimes they don't know what they're doing and they'll just go and just drop like 20 keywords in and you gotta be careful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you need to be talking to a professional and yeah, that's yeah. another big one. It's a really interesting point because I remember back in the day when I first dabbled in SEO, you can do things, you know, keyword stuffing where you put white text in a white background with the right keywords and trick Google and do all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Like the, the, those days are long gone, you know, like um, I remember like 12, 13 years ago, you could go into forums and buy like a thousand uh, directory submissions and things like that. And like that used to work back then, but today you'd never mm -hmm. do that because it's so risky. And you'd never yeah. put white text on white background because like that type of stuff, you can easily lead a penalty from Google. So you can get a, like a, a manual penalty from Google if you're kind of spamming heavily. So mm -hmm. yeah, you got, you got to be very careful. You don't want to do that. You don't want to keyword stuff as well. Google's quite sophisticated now. They can easily pick up keyword stuffing. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of those things where some of the people that we talk to, I mean, I don't pretend to be an expert in SEO at all, but some of the people that we talk to don't understand that there, there can be a, a negative effect if you don't do it right. Exactly. Like um, if, you, if you're doing things wrong with SEO, you can get hit with a, a manual penalty or they have algorithm updates where you can get affected by as well. So you just got to be doing things the right way. And the thing is, some people think, oh, I'll just like, spam the hell out of my site and I'll get some quick wins, but three months of traffic can potentially lead to like 12 to 24 months of um, getting into trouble from Google to mm -hmm. kind of get that trust back. So yeah, you got to do things the right way. I think SEO has definitely changed over the years. There's a, there's a lot more to it now. So you got to be careful. 
Yeah, nice. So let's go um, just the next step then. So let's just say that, you know, they go through, they know they've got the basics covered in terms of like the technical stuff. Well, actually, just before we jump on to the next step, um, what kind of tools do you use to do the audit? Is it something you do manually with your team or is it a, a tool that you use uh, to, to go and get it done? Yeah, so we use multiple tools. I mean, um, some of the top ones are most used in the industry. Like we use like ahrefs.com. So that's a really good tool for like backlink analysis and keyword research. Uh, we use um, like SEMrush for keyword data. So that's another really good one. We use tools like Sitebulb and Screaming Frog for uh, scraping websites. So when you scrape a whole website, you can pick up technical issues on these tools. Yeah, I mean, there's like other tools that we use that are more advanced and more costly. Um, we use tools like clearscope.io. It's out of Silicon Valley. So that's a, a content analysis tool. We also use like some free tools, you know, like you got like Pingdom, which is for like a speed tester. And you got like uh, squish.app for downsizing images. And I mean, there's heaps of different tools that we use. Um, we even uh, use Scrapebox for white hat methods as well, like uh, scraping... Um, scraping results in Google. Sometimes you need to do that from, from a white hat approach. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it really depends on what you want to do. Um, there's also, with SEO, there's also like a, a huge manual component as well. So sometimes you can use all the tools in the world, but you've still got to diagnose a technical problem. Or you, like a lot of clients that we work with, there's a, there's a big consulting element to it. And some questions that we get, they're questions that like you can't find an answer to online. You've just got to know them from like your own your own experience in the industry. Like someone the other day asked, can we like no archive our whole website type thing? And I was like, that's not really a, a question that like if you went onto Google and searched for no archive in your whole website, what's the SEO implications? There might be like three articles that are from like many years ago. No one's actually done a case study on it. So knowing answers to things like that, that that's the thing about seo there's thousands of different potential questions that people can ask and that's where if you have the experience you'll be able to ask like answer most of them yeah nice so then look i don't know if the next question is a good question like because obviously there's different facets to it right like it's yeah. kind of like when someone comes to me and they go look we're we've got we've got very limited time we need to do this how do you how do you get it done um but I'm going to pose the same question to you. Not sure if it's a good question in terms of SEO or not, but let's yeah. just say a business with limited time, limited budget. What do you think is the most effective way for them to increase the, the results from SEO? Yeah. I mean, um, it depends on the vertical the client wants to work in. So um, usually like you want to try and forecast some SEO growth and you want to give them an estimation of how long things are going to take. So usually it's going to take between three to six to 12 months, depending on how competitive the niche is. I mean, if we get calls from people and they're like, oh, I want to be on page one in a week, like we're straight mm -hmm. up with them and be like, sorry, mate, it doesn't work like that. Like yeah. you're trying to rank for credit cards, you know, like um, yeah. <laughs> talking to us, you may as well look at some paid advertising. So I'm pretty, pretty honest to people. Like um, sometimes people don't like that. So yeah, like I think that's just the way we've built this business, just being honest to people and telling them straight up how it is. And um, yeah, but how long can things take yeah it really depends on how competitive the niche is a lot of people want to they've got to start with the basics as well like someone the other day was like oh like like we want to show up for these keywords type thing and they're like i can't remember what career it was and i was like well you don't even show up for your brand terms at the moment so you got to start with the basics you know you want to show up for your brand terms first before you start thinking about all these other keywords so yeah, there's a lot of things you got to think like that. So it's a tricky one. Yeah, I think, you know, that's kind of, I, I quite like your approach in terms of you know, being upfront and honest with people because you know, the SEO industry might not necessarily have the best reputation. And I think yeah. it's all these guys coming through going, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll get you onto the first page and then, you know, not, not being able to follow through and actually get the results. So it's good that you kind of, with honesty approach first, because you're right. Like if you're competing against a bank or someone selling credit cards, like there's so much money going into it and banks mm. are investing in their, in their own SEO. It's not like it's something that they're not doing. So, you know, it takes time to get results. Um, what are you going through though? Like t take that example for for instance, right? If you're trying to rank for an SEO to up credit cards as an SEO term, um, obviously as a, as a new player to market, uh, what's the type of, 
results that you expect to see throughout the process. Like obviously it's going to take longer than 12 months to get onto the first page, but are you expecting to see incremental step ups every single month or is it more like a hockey curve where you just get the result in the last few months because it all kind of compounds? Yeah, it depends on the industry the client's in. Um, usually like, uh, like for example, we took on a client in the, um, the loan space like um, probably like two years ago. And I think um, it took them like about maybe six to 12 months to really see like a good growth. That, that is usually, if it's, it depends on how new the website is as well. So like if someone comes to, you, to our team and they've got like a, a brand new website, it's going to take a little bit longer to kind of build up that trust because you've got to build up the authority of the site. So doing that can take some time, but if it's an existing website that's already been around for five, six years, that's good because usually you can look for like quick wins and look for like um, content targeting and like do keyword research and find like low keyword difficulty keywords that you can kind of go after and things like that. And, build out landing pages and like do link acquisition to those pages and things like that. Use internal links to those pages, like really trying to focus on um, getting that traffic into the site as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I guess it does. It is one of those questions, right? Where it depends on what they're trying to sell, what industry, exactly. who the customers are and kind of what they're searching. Um, so, let me ask you this question then. So as you yeah, as you guys go through and build the SEO stuff, are you doing any paid advertising to supplement as you go or is it mainly just to focus on SEO? Um, so I'd say like 90% of our business is SEO. Uh, 10% is paid media. And most of those paid media clients are just like clients that we're already doing their SEO for. And they're just right. like, hey, like we've been ripped off so many times to paid search and you guys just do our campaign. So we've just kind of like yeah. fallen into it. A lot of campaigns that we work into um, that we would like to have dedicated agencies just for their paid search and we're managing their SEO. Uh, traditionally, we mainly work for like mid to large type companies. And whilst we've got a few like fast growth startups and things like that, um, most clients I think that we work with, they kind of want to separate different disciplines. I find with, especially with digital marketing, it's really hard to find an agency that does everything well. Mm -hmm. It's like with your business, you know, like you do like lead gen very well, but if someone came to you for SEO, you know, you'd be like, well, like, uh, like it's not <laughs> my specialty. Yeah. You know? And it, and that, that's the thing. Like, and I think a lot of digital agencies will say, Oh, we do everything. You know, we do like web dev, we do SEO, we do PPC, we do, um, Legion, like anything you want, we can do it. We're experts at everything, but that's not the case. You know, I think, um, and a lot of clients that we have, they, they kind of realize that they want specialists in each area. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think that, that, that that's a really good point. And it's both a function of, you know, people wanting to get businesses wanting to get the maximum return from their investment, which is completely understandable, but also, you know, the industry itself is, um, it, it has been, there have been a few cowboys come through. Yeah. who have said that and obviously burnt a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's a really good point because like, even if you think about like in a, a business, right? If they hire a, hire a marketing department, they need different people with different functionalities and they can do different things. You wouldn't expect your copywriter to do design work. You wouldn't expect your designer to go and build you know, code websites. <laughs> it's a similar kind of thing, right? Like we don't touch SEO because I just don't know, it, like nowhere near enough to even get started. Um, yeah. So that's why, yeah, I think... So speaking to someone like you, it's always good to get your take on where you think things like SEO are going. So um, yeah, it makes yeah. complete sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. Like, um, you you got to pick people that are right, the right fit for what you're doing, you know. You don't want to just get someone who says they're good at everything and then that's when problems start to happen. And we see that so many, so many times, you know. I mean, I don't want to discredit a lot of digital agencies, but a lot of people don't know what they're doing. There's, there's yeah, so, many, so I, many cowboys <laughs> out there, you know, and like um, people are promised the world, but yeah, there's a lot of agencies, you know, you're in trouble when they got more sales people than actual people doing the work. Yeah. So, you've seen a few companies like that, but man, they're doing well. So like full credit to them, but you know, um, yeah, you don't know if they're doing anything good for the whole industry. Because, you know, someone can get burnt from a dodgy lead gen provider or a dodgy whatever, and then they just don't want to ever do it again. 
I'll go back to yeah. offline advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, don't, don't worry about trashing them. I, I, I talk a lot of crap about the industry all the time because you're right. There are people out there. And um, you know, I, I think we both know a fair few of them who yeah. you know, sell for themselves really, really well and market for themselves really, really well. But when it comes to clients, you know, we look at the reports we give the clients and we look at them and go, what are you guys even charging for? It's a very, very good point. So one other thing I wanted to find out about you, uh, you know, from you, sorry, is the, in terms of the marketing mix, because one of the things we look at is the types of people that we work with, obviously that don't have unlimited budgets, they've got a set budget. Where do you think SEO is? Like, how do you advise your clients in terms of where to fit SEO within their overall marketing mix? Yeah, so I mean, like, um, it, once again, it really depends on the client. Because if you're if you're a big business, you know, you you might be spending um, like ninety percent of your your digital budget on like paid and like display, and then ten percent might go to SEO. Like, it might be a split like that. Um, usually, SEO will traditionally have like a smaller section of the marketing pie. So. Very rarely do you see a client um, that has like a 50-50 kind of split. I mean, we do work for some uh, types of clients where they're in industries where they can kind of only do SEO. Like, the, for example, we've got like um, uh, large affiliate clients in the US and we've got like crypto clients as well. And um, there's a lot of restrictions in terms of what types of advertising they can do. So mm. those type of clients are very heavy on SEO. So yeah, like those clients will traditionally have a, a more healthier spend for SEO, but then you might be talking to another client like an e-commerce brand and then they might be spending, I don't know, 30 or 40,000 a month on uh, PPC. But when it comes to SEO, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be very cautious to spend 3K. So yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's the thing, you know, and like, yeah, you, you gotta like SEO, I think um, you really gotta show the value, you know, because you can make really good ROI like you can invest, um, uh, like it could be like three or 4K a month in SEO. And then that three or 4K could turn into 40, 80, 100K. Mm -hmm. Like we've got clients that have a monthly organic traffic value of like a million dollars plus. So then yeah. organic traffic is worth a million dollars plus per month. And then these clients, they're not exactly new. They've been in business five years. So yeah, there's a lot, a lot of opportunity out there. Yeah, definitely is. So the way that I, I think of it, I'm, I'm not sure if you're um, in agreement or not, but I always think of like a curve where it's kind of like two intersections, right? Because typically when a company, say like a funded startup comes through, like we need traction fast. I, yeah. I always like SEO for the long-term play because yeah, yeah. at a certain point, even if you keep paying for PP, PPC, yes, it's good to get started with. But eventually if you do the long-term stuff well, there's a point where they kind of intersect. Exactly. And the long-term stuff, the value goes up with the PPC, you've always constantly been putting budget in. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's, for me, that's kind of the way I look at it. It depends on the priorities of the business. If they're yeah. like, we need leads in the next six months or we're going to go under, yeah. well then probably not the right play for SEO. Exactly. But if they've got a healthy pipeline already, well then definitely that's where SEO can kind of fit in yeah. really well for them. Exactly. No, you're hundred percent right. And that, that's the thing like um, PPC, like that's usually going to have like a, you're going to be spending more upfront on that because it's like um, we, ha we used to have a client who was like PPC is like turning the tap on, you know, and he was like, once you turn the tap on, you'll be spending a lot of money. But the thing is when you instantly turn that tap off, the money, like the traffic and money will stop, but that's where you need SEO to kind of like continue. Cause it's like a, it's like a, it, that, that was his analogy that he always used to drop. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, like, actually, that's actually pretty good, man. Cause like, as you turn and tap on, if you don't have to plug in the, in the, in the sink, the tap mm. goes straight through. So every single month you're turning that on, but you put the plug in, which is SEO. And all of a sudden you're building up the pool as well. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. Flesh out analogy. <laughs> right. he, he was always um, dropping analogies, this guy, but yeah, like, um, <laughs> It's true. Like SEO, you got to build it up over time, you know, and um, it's a long-term play. Yeah. A hundred percent. If it's a business that needs traffic quickly, we'd push them towards like doing like paid advertising, social advertising, you know, there's so many people that are doing that well. So yeah, like that's the thing. It's a long-term business play and you're right. It's something that you build up gradually and you're right. There is an inflection point where you kind of see the two meet, the two will meet. But in addition to that, as I said, there's certain industries where you can't do paid advertising. So they're real F SEO heavy industries. So, yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. So I've, I've just got one more question for you, man. It's, yeah. a, it's a question I ask everyone else that comes on here. <laughs> what, what, what question should I have asked you that I haven't asked yet? If it's SEO related, business related, what, what, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, like um, a real common one is like, uh, like, like, where do you find good SEO people? Like, uh, <laughs> like, um, what are your tips of growing a business? Like, how do you get, how do you work with big businesses? <laughs> people always ask that. <laughs> Even when I've done talks at meetups, like people in the crowd would be like, "How do you get big businesses as a client?" <laughs> like that always happens. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how do you get big business as a client? Is a good one. Like, I think that a lot of people seem to ask that. Like, what's, like what's, just <laughs> yeah. What's 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 your formula? Because I know you've got some like when you told me about the clients before the call, you've got some amazing clients, like some really household names. Like, how do you, how do you normally get? Is it through your own ACO or is it for referrals? Like, what's your kind of mix? Um, yeah, like I mean, like think getting big business, it, it's a lot of relationships. So I was lucky to work with like 50 paid search people at my last agency. So a lot of those people went in house and then they kind of, when they need SEO, they pick up the phone and call me and it's just like networking, you know, going to events and building relationships with good people. It's like building partnerships with, uh, reputable companies that work with big businesses. Um, it's just, you got to be at events. You got to be speaking at conferences, you know, um, like just, you got to be everywhere, you know, and there is an element of doing your own SEO as well. Traditionally, what I've found over the years is customers that come through SEO as a traffic source. Usually they're pretty, that sometimes you won't get the best customers, but you'll be surprised. Like, for the 90% of the not so great customers, there'll be 10% of good that comes through. So you've got to be quite targeted in the terms that you're kind of targeting to get customers through organic traffic sources. Uh, we've, we've been lucky to get some, some, some good ones. Um, like big traffic sites, I'm talking like sites that are getting millions of visitors a month have come through that way. Yeah, those are some really good ones. And I think it, like just speaking at events, you've got, to be, you've got to be out there in the market. You've got to be known for a certain thing. And, relationships is so key you know like you can just go down for a few beers at like a event and make a contact and then like six months later they'll give you a call and be like hey we've been scammed like four times and we need you guys to help out and um yeah that's happened a few times so it just it takes a one person doesn't it just like one yeah. person can make the biggest change to the business so oh like even another thing that's so random is like when you work with someone and you do really good work and then that person moves on to another company mm. and then they like call you up and be like hey we need someone to help and like <laughs> when you've been in the market for a long time you kind of you get known for certain things so yeah yeah that's awesome i might have to get you back on for another episode on how to grow agencies because you guys have grown really fast <laughs> as well i think yeah definitely that um that specialization that expertise that you guys have it's something that you can't really fake uh there's so many yeah, yeah. agencies coming on at the moment but as soon as you start diving into the way they think about marketing how they look at strategy execution it's kind of like i don't think you guys have quite got it so obviously you guys have been around for a while you know the way you talk about seo you're the way you understand it, not just the technical stuff, but the strategic stuff as well. Yeah. I think that's definitely um, a key point that's going to be hard to match for anyone else in the market. It is like, and I think that's the problem. Like people just try to be experts at everything. And I think sometimes you just got to stay in your lane. And I think mm -hmm. even in the U S market, like you see SEO agencies, that like the SEO for only a certain vertical. So yeah. like they'll be like SEO is just for dentists or SEO is just mm -hmm. for lawyers. And there's so many of these companies popping up because the market is so big. You can't do that in Australia because no. like the market's so small. Like, <laughs> like we don't people here, man. <laughs> we don't we don't have 20 million businesses like they do in the states. So there's like two million businesses here, and um, that yeah, they've got so much more like uh, companies with, that are and the the understanding of the clients is far more educated as well. Like we've got a few clients in the US and like some of the stuff like when you get on a call with them they're just they're very knowledgeable because they've been doing this stuff for like over 10 years so i think um just clients in australia like we're just trying to educate everyone teach them the right way to do things because i think like people yeah. have just been taught the wrong way and like yeah. people get the wrong idea of how something is right and what's wrong so yeah it's taking time you've got to educate the market and yeah like we we it's a long-term thing, but I think things are definitely moving in the right direction.
Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, there's been huge changes within SEO, even even in just businesses understanding that you can't go and hire a company out of you know India for five bucks an hour and expect a good result. Yeah. I mean, even then, it's you know, just the understanding of quality and how much expertise you actually need. This isn't something that you know someone can pick up every weekend. This is actually a whole field of expertise by itself. Yeah, like it's not something you can outsource to Fiverr or like go <laughs> yeah. on to wherever and get someone to do it for like five bucks. It's not like that, especially if your business has a lot of revenue coming in from uh, traffic sources mm-hmm. like organic and you wouldn't risk it, you know? Yeah, you don't like, want to get um, it wrong. You, or you don't want to get it wrong. And you'd be surprised, like we've dealt with companies that like are big businesses and they've, they've just dealt with the wrong suppliers and it's cost them, you know, like they've had to lay off staff because they've lost so much traffic and it happens in Australia, you know, like mm. we got a big, uh, big cosmetic surgery client down in uh, Melbourne and they used the wrong agency that absolutely destroyed their site. They lost like 80% of traffic and Whoa. yeah, like we've had to help them kind of uh, get it repaired and moving in the right direction. Mm. So it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's tough. It's definitely a tough industry um, you know, and a tough practice as well. If, if you don't get it right. So no way. James, man, thanks so much for sharing all your knowledge. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing that I got out of this was understanding that there's so many different facets of SEO, but it all kind of starts from the basics. Like you need to get the technical basic stuff, right? And then you can look at the stuff like link building, which I mean, we kind of haven't even mentioned. And there's a whole <laughs> episode on link building, which is a whole strategy in and of itself. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to get you back for that one. But um, if people want to get you know, some more information, if they want to get help from you or potentially talk to you, about getting you guys to help them with their SEO, what's the best way to contact you? Um, prosperitymedia.com.au, that's our website. So we've got a bunch of information on there. You can add me to LinkedIn, James Norquay. Yeah, I'm, uh, we're more than happy to kind of answer any questions that people have. Like, even if like, you're not the right client for us, we're more than happy to just kind of point you in the right direction or like, like you've talked about today, you know, like tell people what's the right thing to do. So we're pretty straight up like that. Like we're not going to sell something to someone they don't, something they don't need, you know, mm. kind of say like, if your business is at this point, you should probably talk to someone like Will or, you know, or like talk to whoever knows, like someone who's a better vendor for what they need. So yeah, we do a lot of Perfect. that. Yeah. Awesome. And I, no, no, I think that's part of the reason that we, that we kind of get along so well. We've got the same <laughs> philosophy when it comes to it. So um, awesome. Look, I'll, I'll put it into the show notes. Uh, James, again, man, thank you for sharing all your knowledge. Uh, I definitely would love to have you back on uh, at a later point to talk more advanced SEO stuff because, you know, hands up, I'm, I'm not great at SEO and I don't pretend to know what I'm doing, um, but you guys are absolute experts. So thanks again, man, and look forward to talking to you again in the near future. All right. Cheers, Will. Cheers for the time. Thanks, mate.